Good morning, afternoon, evening, good day. Um, my name is Kim. I am the Children and Young Adult Consultant with the Connecticut State Library. I'm here with Rebecca from the Case Memorial Library to tell us all about something that we readers probably know quite a bit about and have given many a paycheck to, um, book boxes that they created for folks at the library, children, teen, adults, you're going to tell me because I'm quite honestly, I'm not sure. But um, thank you for being with us today, Rebecca, uh, so that other libraries can take a page out of your book. Thank you. Sure. For thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be joining you on this um, page that you've started. That's very exciting. Um, it's really nice to see all of these great ideas that are coming out of other libraries. Um, so today I am talking about our book boxes. This is something that I created um, to serve my department, my, my patron. So I'm the head of reference in adult services, and that encompasses teens. So my book box service serves teens um, from grades 7 through 12, as well as adults. Um, and basically, book boxes are essentially reader's advisory service masquerading as a program. Um, and the idea for this sort of came out of a couple different places. Um, and with most of my ideas, typically what I do is I just am always observing um, what's going on in my community, what types of things people are purchasing, um, what different sites have for sale, just experiences that are out there in the world that people enjoy that sort of closely relate to what we do at the library. So um, one of my friends and I had been talking at, at one point about how cool it would be if you could like, um, you know, get a book and have different things that you open or unbox throughout the book to simulate what's happening as you're reading. Um, and, you know, I always thought that was a really fun idea, but very difficult, I think, to replicate, you know, in a larger library setting. And around the same time, subscription book boxes started getting to be really popular. And it just seemed like a really neat idea. Um, you know, to have that little experience along with the book. Um, and then simultaneously, I also just was noticing in a lot of social media groups and communities and things that I'm a part of that something that would consistently come up across groups, no matter what the interest was, um, was that people would ask for recommendations for books. And it's one of those things that I think libraries, um, are really well poised to do. We are good at reader's advisory. We are trained in reader's advisory. Um, we can do that, but like most things, we're not really great at telling the community that that's something that we're really good at. So they go to friends and they go to um, other people. And I just thought there's something here where I can pull this all together um, it's, you know, it's difficult, I think, sometimes to advertise just, we know about books, come ask us about books. But when you package it in something that's fun and exciting and novel, um, I thought that that would be a really great way to um, have that service reach more people. Um, and so that was sort of where the concept came from. Um, was just this, you know, reader's advisory repackaged cleverly into like an unboxing experience. So um, I pitched this to our director and just, you know, outlined like the cost, you know, that I wanted the, this, you know, it's not something we're going to put in bags. It's, you know, the fun of it is the unboxing. It is, you know, the little treats and surprises. Um, and so you know, I just created some little labels um, for the boxes and got some tissue paper and created a Google form and just, you know, created some flyers. Um, typically at our library, our, our advertising is, is low key. Um, we have, you know, paper flyers in house. We have a calendar. We put our events in the newspaper and we have an e-news blast. That's the extent of our promotion. Um, and I launched them in January. So we we launched boxes for teens and adults. And I started fairly small for our community. So I did 12 of each. And I think they 
filled up, registration filled up within a day or two of launch. It was like with a with a pretty, you know, and I, I kept a wait list that was, you know, as large as the list and nobody dropped out. Everybody um, filled out their forms. And so I gave myself, you know, uh, maybe like a week or two. That's typically what I would give myself to collect that data and, and think about it. Because one thing um, that I think is sort of tough in a reader's advisory situation typically is that people will come up to you with a request for reader's advisory and everything that you can think of is either checked out or you don't own it or you're drawing a blank. Um, and, and a lot of times when people want a suggestion for a book, they want it, you know, they've asked you, they want it now. Um, and they don't want to wait, you know, the 10, 15, 20 minutes it might take you to come up with that like really awesome selection that you know would be a hit. Um, so this, I think, has been a really nice way to slow down that process a little bit and make those thoughtful recommendations, really like do that deep dive on reader's advisory, wait for the right books to come in. Even sometimes I'll put holds on books that I know people will like. If I see them come across my path throughout the month, I'll think like people are really into mysteries lately and this is one that people would love and I'll like grab them and start um, collecting books for it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been really great in terms of the impact. It's definitely brought that service readers advisory more to the forefront. Like I even had people after we started say to me, and these are regular customers, people who are in the library at least once a week say to me, I never would have thought to ask you for a book recommendation, which I think to us as librarians is wild. It's like, that's what we do. How can you simultaneously think we read all day, but you can't ask us about books? Um, but it was, it's really nice to see these people, you know, responding to it. It's, it's actually one of our most shared things, um, shared programs that we put on Facebook. So we, you know, just typically put our events on Facebook and there's always somebody each month who shares it and tags a person and says, this is what I was talking to you about. Um, so it's just been a very rewarding program to keep going. Um, there's no shortage of interest in it. Um, I've had to expand the number that I do a couple of times. Um, and, you know, I think there's probably a maximum because, you know, right now when I do a launch, um, for the week, you know, I'm selecting maybe 60 to 70 books a week, like in that one week for people, which is, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of work, but it's definitely worth it. It's, um, you know, probably our most popular, our most talked about, our most well-received program right now. Wow. I'm, as you were talking, I was kind of looking and I was like, I think that's a book box and I, that's some stuff that came in a book box. So can you, let's maybe dive into the logistics of this a little bit. So sure gosh okay so you started in January I know I'm just kind of trying to like like where do I start so you started in January um and you said you you started with I believe 12 books for each so now is this is this uh 12 of the exact same book boxes or are they different titles with different things sort of dependent upon what people are asking for yes so um the first one that I launched one of the questions that I ask people in, in the Google form is what genre would you like for the book in your box? And then tell me some things that you've liked in that genre. Um, and I do two books in each box um, because I just couldn't limit myself. And sometimes people would give different information and I would think like, no, I, there's two books I want to give. So I give everybody <laughs> two books. They get to choose two genres. They tell me books that they like. I ask them for any kind of content warning, trigger warnings, things like that. So I can be sure I'm not giving them, you know, content that they're not looking for that would be upsetting to them. Yes. Um, and I ask them some other like personal questions, like, if they have any allergies, if they have favorite colors, if they have initials that they use so that I can um, create or include some little things in there. So each book box gets two books and I choose them each book individually for each person based on their responses. So it's not 
like I'm not doing like mystery boxes for the month or romance or it's it's <laughs> like you tell me that you like memoirs and you like historical fiction world war ii like that's what you're getting in your box they also give people the opportunity to tell me if um it's a new genre so mm -hmm. sometimes people you know it, it, it's helpful to know if you ask for mystery like you know have you read every single mystery book that I can possibly think of and I need to do a deep dive or is this new to you and I can like give you Agatha Christie yeah um so that's really helpful information too um and the book boxes for teens and adults are a little bit different in what they get so the book boxes for adults they typically get like one non-food item and one food item um, so I think last month, what I gave them in their book box was like a nylon, like reusable tote, sort of like a baggy bag. Um, I love those. They're I, I think that's an adult thing to, my yeah. dad was so fascinated when I pulled one out of my purse, when my mom asked if I had a big purse and I was like, no, but I've got a whole separate bag you can use. Those <laughs> are my favorite. Yeah. Um, so I try, I try to pick things, you know, within budget that will be useful. I don't, I don't want to give people like a, you know, something be, simply because it fit the budget. I want it to be something that they might potentially use. So, you know, I've given them things like shower steamers, candles. Um, I'm sorry. What's a shower? What's a shower steamer? Is oh, it a shower device? steamer. It's, it's no, no, no. <laughs> it's sorry. just like a, like a bath bomb, except like oh. recognizing that most adults don't actually have time for a bath so. or real bathtubs so yeah exactly you might not have yeah. a bathtub you yeah. might not want to take a bath but yeah. you yeah. know you're cleaning yourself somehow so right um so, so those types of things usually in the adult box I'll give some sort of chocolate unless somebody says yeah. that they have an allergy and I might you know pivot and give them something else mm -hmm. um with the teen boxes I'm usually including one you know small item like that um and then I ask them if they want a sweet treat, a salty treat, or both. And so they typically, I would say like 50% of them ask for sweet and 50% of them ask for both. So they might get like, you know, a bag of Cheetos and like a Kit Kat or something. Um, so that's, you know, I try to lean in with the teens a little bit more to the food because I think it's harder to select a meaningful, small thing. For yeah. tea. Although they they typically um, respond pretty well to those too. Pop sockets. Everyone loves a pop socket. Yep, they've done that, that before. Yet. You have. Yeah. I was gonna be like, I bet she's done that before. But yeah, just, <laughs> yeah I, I have to go back and look at my list. I've done so many different things. You know, we're in our our tenth month now. Wow. Um, wow. But yeah, it's typically like little, mm -hmm. you know little stuff like that sometimes it'll be you know something as basic as like a couple of good gel pens or you know but jelly rolls I exactly i try to i try to give them things that i know will be put to use even if they're not like incredibly exciting mm -hmm. um yeah. Wow. So, so you do 12, so the, the items that you give them, the jelly rolls, the, the shower steamers are obviously things that they're keeping, but the books are the books, library books that you're, that you're scanning for, um, circ stats that they have to return. Yes. Um, so that is, you know, I've seen it go different ways with book boxes where, you know, you're, you're looking in your, your discards, you're looking at like, advanced reader copies, which are just so hard to get in print now that I didn't even consider that an option. So um, many. I'm like, I just got some the other day. I'm, oh, nice. You'll have yeah. to your, that'll have to be a different well, say, um, CT Pages one is, how do you get your hands on? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but maybe you should. Copies. I only get digital now. Yeah. Um, so... What was I saying? Oh, so yes, they are library books. Um, and I I created an account for the library specifically for this so that when I have a book that I want to include in a book box, I check it out to the account just so that the rest of the staff doesn't see that as being available. And I sort of gather them over a period of like two weeks and then um, keep them all checked out on that account. And then once I'm ready to assemble the book boxes, 
I copy the barcodes on the copier in a way that makes it so that it's easy to scan for the CERC staff. Mm -hmm. um, and I fold that paper in half, write the person's last name on it and tuck it in so that the box doesn't have to be unboxed in front of the patron to check it out. So gotcha. my, my, um, my coworkers made fun of me when I launched this because I sent out a memo saying, do not take the books out, <laughs> keep the box closed. And they were like, what's in this box? Like, why is it, <laughs> why is it such a secret? It's like, no, it's just, that's the experience is to take it yeah. home and have that unboxing. Mm -hmm. It is great. Especially if you like do it for the gram, all the like, you know, <laughs> book, book talkers and books to grammars and, yeah. and things like yeah. that. So it's fun. Um, do, was I, I just wanted to ask a question that I think was kind of important. Oh, um, so you, you have sort of, um, a budget for, for the items that you buy. A approximately what is that? Like, I'm trying to think if there was a library that was like, oh, I think this sounds good. I think I have the time to do this. Or I've got like a volunteer that'd be really great at doing this. Yeah. Um, you know, but like, how much do you set aside? Is it, I mean, the things you're describing the, you know, pens and, and I don't know, or bath bombs. I have no idea, you know, just sort of what's, what's sort of a ballpark amount that you think would be okay for this. Sure. Um, so I think that the, the fun thing about this is that it does scale up or down according to your resources. Mm -hmm. So I currently do about 30 to 32 boxes a month. I had to um, increase the amount for adults because it was, people were getting upset. Okay. It was filling up within like hours. So you're lucky I don't live there because I <laughs> would want one also. I just refresh the page until, a, you know, I can yeah. put my stuff in there. Um, I do have a, a set launch time every month. So everyone knows that as of October 1st at 7 a.m., you can register. So people like set reminders for themselves and they, you know, you see like all the registrations come in at seven, seven Oh one, seven Oh two. I love that. Um, it's like checking into a flight. Like you it, just wait. And yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, like I said, it can scale up or down. I typically budget about $3 a box in like Ooh. goodies. Like, yeah, that's not bad at all. No, no. And I, I find a lot of good stuff. I'm always kind of on the lookout when I'm out in the world. Like I was at Whole Foods one day and I saw they had like a display of like Tate's chocolate chip cookies, like a little individual bag of that. Mm -hmm. And they were like with your prime discounts and all of that. It was like 79 cents. So I grabbed, you know, totally eluded their display <laughs> and <laughs> purchased a questionable amount of chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> No and such thing. Just saved those for yeah. the next box because I figured that's like a really nice little thing to receive. But mm -hmm. you know, it ended up being like 80 cents a person. The nice. bags that I got, I found, and they're actually very nice bags. Like, you know, I buy things in bulk. So when it comes down to, you know, the pricing, it's cheaper. So I think the the bags that I purchased for the last one ended up being like maybe a dollar twenty-five a bag yeah. or something like really you know That's so that great. was really like, cost effective yeah so um i think that it's something that like if you just have your eye out yeah. you know if you're looking you can do things that are are relatively inexpensive um i do so we have literature mailer boxes that are, are part of the budget too so i think um you know a package of 50 literature mailer boxes is about $70, um, you know, budget for tissue paper yeah. and box labels. And um, I also include just, oh, one other thing I do is label the boxes and mm. ask them to please return it to the library so that we can keep costs down. Um, yes. Because if you're not um, reusing the boxes, you know, that's another dollar two dollars mm -hmm. a month that you'd be spending and, and most people will return them I haven't actually had to purchase a second lot oh, of boxes that's, yeah so, that's great yeah yeah oh, is this only for residents no it's Probably for anybody oh <gasps> so I who live a couple towns over I could put in an order for a book box and absolutely. just go pick it up <gasps> yeah Absolutely. We I'm don't a little mad anything. that we're doing a CT pages on this. Anyone who's watching, you can't have one. It is only for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I, we do, all of our programs are just open to anyone who's interested. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really believe in limiting access like that, you know, I wouldn't limit it to any other type of program and all of yeah. our, all of our residents have the same opportunity to register. And I, I try to increase, you know, as I can. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I, you know, if I actually had just, this is awaiting approval from our friends for official sponsorship. Um, but the total cost, like if we were doing 30 boxes a month, and spending three dollars a box, which is not typical. I'm usually under. Mm -hmm. um, you're looking at about twelve hundred dollars for the year. You know, that's not horrible for the I, year. Yeah, that's wow. Well, that's yeah. that's more than fair, especially for a program that you say. And I'd, I'd love to sort of hear if you have any anecdotes about this. That the public is responding fairly well to teens included. Teens seem yes. to be. If I hear about an age group that people are, you know, struggling to reach or connect with, it is that teen demographic. So, yeah, I mean, hey. yeah, it's it's um it's been really good. It's definitely reached a lot of people who, you know, we don't they're not program attendees. They don't engage in that way, mm -hmm. um, and they you know participate in this. I've gotten so much good feedback, um, you know, from people who. Like I'm, they tell me I'm picking better books for them than they pick for themselves, um, oh. which is just so wonderful. We have people who just regularly sign up. I had somebody who signed up um, and was really excited to get it because it was her birthday and she thought that, <gasps> that would be such a great birthday present for herself. So it's just, you, um, you know, we're definitely getting a lot of those really like heartwarming, you know, amazing testimonials, you know, just that you know and it's something where people I think I've I keep track because I have you know extensive files I want to make sure that I'm not giving the same content yep. to people because sometimes you know when somebody asks for a specific type of book your mind just goes to like one book you're like ah oh, that's the perfect book yep but you have to make sure you haven't already given them that book or like that isn't a book that they listed six months ago as a book that they already enjoyed right. um you know so I keep pretty extensive files and I think this has served maybe around 200 or so individual people this year. Wow. Yeah, a lot of repeat users, but it's, yeah. it's definitely got a pretty expansive reach. Um, teens too, you know, it's been a really, um, really great way for me to one, connect with them you know, and already like know something about them if they come to a program or get them to come to other programs. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also been really enlightening in terms of collection development because mm -hmm. it helps me, it's been helping me to identify where there's interest that I didn't necessarily see before. Mm -hmm. And also when I try to fulfill those requests where our gaps are. Mm. Or like if you think of something that's like core collection and then you realize, oh, our copy, you know, was built two years ago and we just didn't realize it. Then you mm -hmm. have the opportunity to, you know, fill those gaps in the collection um, and definitely see some areas where, you know, maybe your collection development isn't as strong as it could be for the amount of people interested in that. Um, wow. So that's been been really positive, too, to just sort of make those connections with people and for people. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is, I'm like, my mind is blown. I'm, I'm over here. And again, I find myself when I do DCT pages being like, why didn't I think of that when I was still frontline? But I mean, this is so <laughs> amazing to hear. And I, I think, um, one, one of the, the things that I, that I just want to know, is this primarily you doing this? Like, is this, is, are there a team of people picking, but I'm sure you, you, I'm sure you sort of go to someone and be like, hey, like, what's a really great, I know you read historical fiction, like, what's a, yes. what's something so, that you would suggest, but as far as putting them together and purchasing the items, sort of the labor uh, aspect. Um, yeah, so I would say I probably make maybe like 90% of the selections myself. I go to different staff members if I think like, like there's one staff member um, who I, I will go to and I'll say, you know what, I'm stuck. Can you just pull like five mystery, thriller, you know, just pull a bunch of things that you like mm -hmm. and they'll come back and, and create a little pile for me and say, here you yeah. go, or they'll, you know, grab something for someone that they know 
like mm-hmm. what their tastes are and they'll see something on the cart and pull it aside. Um, you know, in areas where I'm not as strong, you know, with my own reading, I might go to a different staff member, but, you know, I would say I probably select like maybe 90% of the books myself. I select all of the um, extras, like all the treats yeah. and surprises. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes I have help assembling them. Sometimes mm-hmm. I don't, I would say, you know, if we have an intern, that's an amazing thing to have yeah. too. I had one of our teen pages help, um, you know, so it's definitely, you know, the process of packaging everything up and making those copies and, and double checking, you know, going back through each individual person's list, you know, making sure that once you've selected books that they're not hitting any of those content warnings. Um, yes. you know, it's, it's definitely labor intensive. Mm. Um, but again, it's, it's one of those things that I think scales up or down yes. well. So mm-hmm. like, if you have a community where you, you, if you're small, if you're a very small library of limited staff, you probably also don't have the same demand on those resources, right? You know, so yeah. you wouldn't have 40 people trying to sign up on the first day, mm-hmm. um, you know, so I think that the work probably you know, scales up or down according right. to the research. Yeah, do what you can do. If you don't think you have the capacity for 15, then start with five, five yeah, children exactly. or you know, five teen, five adults. Yeah, that makes yeah. perfect sense. Yeah, and I think it would be a, a great thing to do for children too that just doesn't happen to be my purview. Yeah, yeah, understandable. Yeah. Um, oh, this is so great. I feel like I've learned so much. I, I really okay. love the connections that you made to you know, this being something that not only helps your community, but helps you with regards to your collection development, collection maintenance is something I talk about a lot all over the place. Um, And uh, the scalability of this, that's exactly the kinds of things that we're hoping to highlight here in CT Pages, you know, don't sort of get caught up in exactly duplicating what someone else is is doing, make the adjustment so that it fits your community, your needs, and your capacity. And this sounds like the perfect program for that. And you will see my name somewhere at some point. I'm so excited. Oh, great. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. I mean, so I've missed, I've missed, uh, uh, what month is it? October. I am sure you are full. That's okay. I'll be right there for November. My November 1st, 7 a.m. (laughs) <laughs> got it. Got it. Don't think I won't write that down. Um, so thank thank you so much, Rebecca, for taking some time out of your afternoon. I, I really think that this is this type of program and, and sort of this type of conversation has the ability to to really um open up the minds of some people who who are just looking for something a little new and different to do. This is a fantastic program. Oh great. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah.